For our last application, we're going to be looking at force and pressure. In particular, we're going to be interested in finding the force exerted on a surface by a body of water. And to answer this question, we're also going to need to know more about pressure, which is defined as the force per unit area. So for pressure, we've got these units of something like um, newtons per square meter. So let's look at pressure in a little bit more detail. Let's say that we have water putting pressure on a surface of area A square meters that is H meters below the surface. So we have some um, water here. We have a horizontal surface here below the water, and we have some pressure being exerted on that um, surface. The pressure on the surface is then computed as pressure equals force divided by area, because we've got this force per unit area, um, where we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, and we can compute our mass as volume times density. So that's going to be the um, volume of this, this column of water here, um, times the density of water, and then we have times gravity, which is um, we have acceleration due to gravity there. Okay, so remember for volume here, this would be units of cubic meters. Density would be our mass per, per volume, so we have kilograms per cubic meter, so volume times density is giving us correct units for mass, and then we have times gravity, and this is being divided by um, the area that we have. So notice that the, the volume of that column of water, um, if this surface here has um, area A square meters, and where some depth h below the surface, then the volume of that column of water here is a times h. This is the volume of the water column. Okay, so we're going to have that volume times our density rho. So rho here is the density of the water, representing the density of water here. Um, and then we have times gravity. I guess I should just say rho is density. In this case, we would be replacing rho with the value of the density of water. So we see that this AH times rho times G divided by A gives us that pressure is just equal to this density times um, acceleration due to gravity times the depth um, that we are below that surface of water. And this pressure that we just computed is called the hydrostatic pressure. So this is just the pressure of water at rest. One thing that's um, interesting and going to be useful to us is that hydrostatic pressure has the same magnitude in all directions. So here we, we thought about the pressure of the water on a horizontal surface, but the, the pressure of the hydrostatic pressure of the water on a vertical wall in a pool, for example, at depth H is the same as the hydrostatic pressure of water on a horizontal surface at depth H. And we're going to be mainly looking at problems of the computing the, the force on a vertical wall, but we're going to make use of this definition of hydrostatic pressure in that, in that problem. So how are we going to find the force on a vertical wall, such as on the face of a dam, assuming that the water completely covers the face of the dam, and we're also going to assume that the water level is at the top of the dam for the purposes of just thinking through the, the main ideas here. Okay. So let's think of just a picture to get us started. So let's say that our dam looks like this. Okay, so we've got the water at the, at the top of the dam. We've got water totally covering this vertical surface here. So how are we gonna find the force of the water against that surface? Well, we know that pressure was equal to force per unit area. So we know that force must be equal to pressure times area. And we also know that pressure is equal to this um, density times gravity times depth. So we have this, this formula here um, for our density times gravity times our depth here times the um, area that we're working with. And so this is our formula basically in the case of a constant depth that we have, but we're going to have variable depth so that at different points along our surface, we have different 
different steps that we have to take into consideration. So just like in all of our other application problems, we have sort of a basic formula that applies to a case where something is being held constant. And then we'll need to take our more complicated problem of having something that's varying, divide up the problem into small pieces over um, so that over each piece we'll have something that, that's being held constant and then add up each of those different pieces. So we're going to be using this slice and sum idea here. We're going to take our dam that we have here and we're going to need to slice it up horizontally. So first we'll need to write some coordinates on here. So let's let y equals zero represent the bottom of this dam and we'll let y equals a represent the top. Then we can slice this up into many, many pieces here, lots of little strips. So I'm going to have this representative strip here. Let me just color it in something to highlight it. So I have my little strip here. Let's say this goes from yi minus um, 1 here up to yi. It would have a little thickness of some delta y. And I could have a sample point in that, that interval, which is my yi star. Okay, so let's think about using this setup now um, to write down what the pressure would be on the strip. So the pressure on the i strip is just equal to the density times gravity times the depth. So if we're at this location of yi star and the water is um, up here at y equals a, then our depth there is going to be, I'll call that hi, equal to a minus yi star. So we have this depth of a minus yi star. Okay, so now we can use this to talk about what the force on the i strip is. So the force on the i strip, oops, on the i strip here, is um, equal to, I guess I should say these are, these are approximate here, um, is equal to um, our pressure here times the area. So we're going to have this rho times g times a minus yi star. That's the pressure. And then we need the area of the um, strip. So the area of the strip is going to be the little thickness of the strip and then times the width of that strip. So we'll have some wyi star that represents the width of the, the strip at a depth of yi star. So we'll have times here delta y times this w of yi star, where that's representing here the area of the i -th strip. Oops. where that's representing the area of the i -th strip. And again, we have this um, first piece here is that pressure on this i -th strip. Okay, so if that's the force on each one of the um, strips, then when we talk about the force on the entire um, vertical wall that we have here, this is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of the forces on each strip. So we'd have a sum from i equals 1 to n of rho g times this a minus yi star times delta y w of yi star, which would then be equal to um, our definite integral here where force is going to be equal to this integral. Um, where our, our bounds for the depths here go from 0 to a, so I'll have 0 to a of rho g times a minus y times w of y dy. So this is what we get for um, our formula for the hydrostatic on that, that vertical wall where the, um, the water level is at the top of the dam and we've got water totally covering the face of the dam. So let me just point out a couple of things about this formula. The bounds here from 0 to A are always going to match the locations of the top and the bottom of the surface. So this is going to match the locations of the top and bottom of the surface. The bounds don't have anything to do with the depth of the water, only with the locations of the top and the bottom of the vertical surface that you're dealing with. 
the a minus y part here um, is measuring your um, distance below the surface of the water. And w of y, the width of a particular strip at depth y, will depend on the shape of the dam of the surface that you're dealing with. And we'll see in some examples um, that there'll, there'll need to be a little bit of work that goes into computing that W of Y, um, depending on the, the geometry of the problem that we have.